In this video, we're talking about severe weather across the eastern U.S. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a slight risk of severe weather with dual areas of tornadic activity. Also, we're going to talk about the whole U.S. and what's in store for the future. Right now, it looks pretty interesting. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. We've got more severe weather out there today, and then looking down the road, things look really interesting. We're finally going to have a chance here to zoom out and really look at that long-term forecast. Before we get started, as always, please punch that like button right in the face for the YouTube YouTube algorithm and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let's get right into talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on right now. In fact, it's really quiet out there, except for right here in northwestern Arkansas, where we have a big line of storms moving through. They just sparked some tornado warnings. And this is associated with a much larger system that is going to spark severe weather across much of the Ohio Valley later today. As you can see, the big yellow area there, that's our slight risk of severe weather today. Everybody inside of there has a chance of seeing damaging winds, maybe some small hail, and of course, that isolated chance of some tornadoes. This includes Little Rock, Memphis, Bowling Green, Nashville, Louisville, Kentucky, all the way up into Cincinnati, Ohio, Columbus, to Cleveland, even all the way up into Buffalo, New York, okay? This is a broad, widespread, slight risk of severe weather. Some of these storms may pack a punch today, so let's start talking about the intricacies of them on the weather models. All right, here's a look at the HRRR model. This is the high-resolution rapid refresh model, and we use this to kind of look at a high-resolution version of what the radar could look like in the future. It's never exactly right, but it gives us a good idea as to where these storms are going and where they could be. By 10 a.m. this morning, we're likely going to see these storms that are in northwestern Arkansas now, maybe riding the border there in northern Ar Arkansas and southern portions of Missouri. Also, scattered showers and thunderstorms are starting to break out all the way into western portions of Kentucky through Indiana, and then once again, even into southern parts of Ontario, uh, Michigan, and then all the way up in here uh, in New York. So let's put this further into motion. And of course, once we get into the daylight heating period uh, around 1 to 3 p.m., we're going to see new convection, new storms starting to pop up here along this cold front. And these storms, at least some of them, are likely going to be severe in nature. Uh, the main threat today is definitely going to be damaging winds, but there are two areas of interest, one down here and one up here, uh, where we do think there could be some isolated tornadoes. But let's focus on timing right now. As you can tell, the majority of the storms are firing up around 3 to 5 p.m. today. We're going to have a, an intense line of storms moving through Arkansas uh, into southeastern portions of Missouri around 5 p.m. Also, some isolated showers and storms are popping up in Middle Tennessee through Central Kentucky around the same time. And then we have these storms up here, some cold core storms up here in Ohio, Michigan, southern parts of Ontario, and even northwestern portions of New York and Pennsylvania. It's at this point where the tornado threat up here in the northeast is going to be the highest. It's mainly these storms up here in New York and Pennsylvania that we're worried about. Uh, but remember, this is an isolated tornado threat. This isn't going to be a widespread outbreak or anything. Uh, and it's also around this time where we start watching this little segment of the storm down here for possible tornadic activity, especially there in western Tennessee. And once again, let's just focus on timing here. Storms are going to squall out into a big line of storms through Nashville into the Louisville area around 11 p.m. And then it's going to continue east into uh, Middle Tennessee, Eastern Tennessee, Eastern Kentucky, and portions of Ohio, uh, you know, between, you know, midnight and 4 a.m. But it's quickly going to weaken out as we go forward and just become a big mess of rain through much of the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic regions uh, as we get into the early morning hours tomorrow. Some of these storms will refire tomorrow, especially around 3 to 4 p.m. And we could see some isolated severe weather over here uh, in the Northeast and the Southern New England areas. But for the most part, it's just going to be a cold front some gusty winds and some heavy rain. So let's give it a boot bop bop back here and let's talk more about that tornado threat briefly today. Uh, due to the orientation of this low pressure system and the way everything is set up, we're going to look at this map again, the 850 millibar winds, because it's this wind layer, the lower level jet streak, that will determine whether or not we have enough to spin in the atmosphere today for tornadoes. Uh, you can see as we go later on into the day, we get some oranges and reds up here in Ohio and portions of Pennsylvania and New York. We very unprofessionally refer to these areas of, of increased lower level jet stream winds as tornado juice on this channel. And it's just a way to kind of uh, make it simple for you. The stronger the winds here, the stronger the wind shear will be. Uh, therefore, I'm calling it tornado juice. And, you know, this isn't very strong. Uh, we do have some areas near 30 to 40 knots of uh, increased lower level jet stream flow there. Once again, nothing crazy. No widespread significant tornadoes are possible today. Uh, however, I do think we're going to have some isolated spin-ups and certainly some stuff that can cause damage. Uh, so we need to take it seriously. And then you can see over 
over here to the south and west, our line of storms is set up around this area around 8 p.m. Uh, around Memphis, all the way up through Paducah, Kentucky, into northern parts of Mississippi. We also have a small increased area of lower level jet stream winds here, okay? Some very small pockets of 30 to 40 knots. Uh, and, it, and it's there where I believe we could possibly see, once again, some isolated tornadoes. Uh, all the way through 10 p.m. into the Nashville region, we have you know some increased areas of lower level jet stream winds, and that will act as tornado juice, possibly sparking very isolated small uh, tornadoes. But even if they're small, if they come down your street, it, you know it could be a big deal for you. So let's make sure we take today seriously, have some way of getting warnings, and when that tornado warning does come through, make sure you have a plan in place uh, and you know what you're going to do uh, to make sure you can get to your safe space as quick as possible. But for the most part, once again, the main threat here is going to be damaging. Winds. The tornado threat is minimal. I just needed to go over it uh, in depth for you because that's what we do on this channel. So even outside of thunderstorms and tornadoes, it's going to be very windy out there with this storm. As you can see around 10 p.m. this evening, as that low pressure system and cold front is crashing through into the eastern portion of the U.S., we're going to have 30 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts just all the way across Illinois, down into western Kentucky, southeastern Missouri, western Tennessee, northeastern Arkansas. Uh, even down here into Texas and Louisiana, this cold front's pretty strong. And on the leading edge of it there behind our main area of storms, uh, we're going to have, once again, maybe close to 50 mile an hour wind gusts, even if you're not in a thunderstorm. So we could see some isolated wind damage here and there outside of severe thunderstorms just associated with the strength of the low pressure system and the cold front coming in. Uh, we're going to see maybe 20 to 30 mile an hour winds as this gets into the Ohio Valley and even more winds down here along the Gulf Coast, 20 to 30 mile an hour uh, wind gusts moving through. And look at this widespread. It's just going to be a windy day tomorrow, Saturday, uh, through much of the Midwest, the Great Lakes region, the Ohio Valley and the Deep South. And those winds, of course, will make it down to the East Coast and the Northeast as well. Now, those winds will be bringing in cooler temperatures with them. As you can tell today, our high temperatures down here in Louisiana are going to be in the upper 80s, lower 90s. Uh, we're going to be in the 80s and 70s through much of the east coast over here but watch that cold front crash through and take us way down tomorrow morning around 9 a.m we're going to be in the 30s up here in iowa and minnesota in the 40s and 50s all the way down into louisiana and texas once again and those high temperatures aren't going to rebound much okay we're in the 70s low 70s 60s down here in louisiana high temperatures in michigan and indiana and ohio are going to be in the 40s and 50s tomorrow after that cold front moves through and then low temperatures once again uh, widespread 40s and 50s for pretty much everybody here after that sweeping cold front moves through. There's going to be some very gusty winds, some severe weather, and then afterwards some much cooler temperatures and drier air, okay? Now that's a look at the short-term forecast. Now let's zoom out and look at the long-term forecast. All right, now we're looking at the Euro and we are really zoomed out here as we are looking at pretty much the whole North American continent. Uh, and we're also looking at those height anomalies. I want to show you this pattern that we're getting ready to be locked into. Uh, as you can see up here in Canada and towards the North Pole, we've got this big area of blocking. The red uh, is increased heights and the blues are uh, decreased heights. Usually our storms and our cooler weather gets caught up around these areas of uh, lower heights. And it's these areas of increased heights that control the placement of these, okay? Uh, so we look at this map a lot in the winter because uh, these lobes, these blue lobes, are usually what dictate, uh, you know, how much snow we're going to get and what kind of pattern we're in that uh, uh, will allow for snowstorms to happen. Uh, so let's see what's happening here as we go later on into October. Something really interesting happens as this area of increased heights kind of gets locked in here in northern Canada. Canada, uh, there near Greenland, and it also starts to expand and really become intense here in northern Canada. And what this is likely going to do is obviously these areas of decreased heights, the lower pressures, the cooler weather, uh, all these storms naturally want to gravitate up to the North Pole here. It's just the way uh, the Coriolis effect works. However, due to this blocking here, it's not able to do that. So all of these lobes and all of these storms are going to be forced southward into the the uh, greater United States area. And if we go all the way out here to the last frame, you can really see we're in a locked and loaded uh, winter pattern, okay? We have this area right here, which would be perfect. If we were in December or January, this would be the perfect setup uh, for a big nor'easter over there on the East Coast with a bunch of snow. And then once again, like I said, locked and loaded with lots of more energy coming down the pipeline here. Uh, this is pretty much the dream scenario if you're a snow lover uh, in the middle of winter, okay? But unfortunately, we are in fall, uh, so there aren't as many parameters in place place to allow for big snowstorms. However, there's a chance that this could bring us some early October snow, especially in the Northeast. Uh, let's check that out now. Okay, so we're zooming in now and we're back on the continental US. 
And we're going to go through the uh, short range forecast once again. There's our cold front and our storms that are going to be happening today and our rain in the northeast tomorrow. That's going to send in some cooler air behind it here. But very quickly, high pressure is going to resurge and allow for a warm air to advect here on the west coast and then kind of act as a wave and go towards the east coast. So uh, I've been talking about this for a while, but, you know, Sunday into Monday, uh, possibly all the way into Tuesday is going to be very quiet and favorable for much of the U.S., okay? Probably one of the quieter uh, time periods of weather that we've had here in a little while. So enjoy it while you can. Uh, as we do have another storm system uh, entering the Rocky Mountains there, uh, going across Wyoming and South Dakota there around uh, Wednesday, October 20th. That is very quickly going to become a bona fide storm system here in the uh, Great Lakes region uh, at, with possibly some storms on the southeastern side there in the Ohio Valley. And look, a little bit of snow there in Ontario. Uh, we're having snow because this 540 line is being dragged down south by this low pressure system. And in fact, we're going to see a little transfer of energy here where this big lobe, once again, this is uh, associated with those lower heights. Uh, normally, this air mass would be way further north in the North Pole, but thanks to that blocking up there, it can't get there. And then around uh, Friday, October 22nd, uh, we're going to have a huge area of cold air coming into uh, North Dakota, South Dakota with some snow showers there. Once again, if this was December or January, this would, you know, the news stations would call this the polar vortex. And we'd be having a big Arctic blast, which is, you know, essentially what this is, but it's not going to be as cold as it possibly could be if we were later into the winter months. But check this out. This is where it gets interesting. A new storm develops here, uh, possibly bringing some snow into the Ohio Valley uh, and the Northeast as we go forward. Look at that. A true winter storm, maybe. Uh, in the, towards the end of October. According to the Euro here, uh, we don't have a lot of snow uh, associated with this, but this could change, okay? I've seen this happen before. This is the kind of pattern that we're gonna be in if we do see early snow uh, in the East Coast. So let's watch this closely. All this cold air is going to be in place. There's gonna be moisture as we have some tropical activity down here. And if we can get those to combine, uh, somebody's gonna see snow, I think, uh, before the end of October uh, in the Northeast, in the Great Lakes region, or e even as far south as into the Mid-Atlantic. So uh, I think we should watch this closely as we go forward. So even though on those last few frames we've got some big cold fronts coming down into the eastern u.s over the next 10 days the complete average is going to be that for the most part we are above average as far as temperature goes here on the east coast and especially in the northeast uh, and we are below average over here on the west coast okay i think this is going to flip though uh, as we get some of those bigger lobes of cold air coming down into the u.s that period of quiet weather is kind of winning the average here uh, bringing our average temperatures a little bit higher on the east coast there i believe and then of course here's a look at that 10 day precipitation total. Most of the uh, precipitation is locked up here in Canada and southern portions of uh, Ontario and then into Quebec. And that's associated with our first storm system that we've been talking about. And then all of this other precipitation here is also associated with today's severe weather pretty much. Uh, and then those couple random storms that come through towards the end of the month. But pretty much everyone else is, is fairly dry. We've got some isolated areas of heavy rain in Oklahoma and Texas as more storms are possible uh, with uh, moisture from Hurricane Pamela. Uh, we got a lot of moisture up here in the Pacific Northwest. But for the most part, this is pretty average, normal October stuff, okay? And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate Appreciate every single one of you. Once again, please remember to slap that like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn notifications on, okay? We need to get our notification squad way up here. We got to feed that YouTube algorithm so more people uh, can get access to this stuff because um, I think uh, we're all having fun here learning about the weather on YouTube. I know I'm having fun you know, you running the channel, so let's spread the word if we can, all right? I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.